Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about tutorial code. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, I wanted to ask you, does the tutorial code differ from production code in real companies? Yes. Well, the syntax is the same, but the tutorial code is a toy example usually in comparison to what production code looks like so it's probably this is probably the biggest uh, hurdle to get over once you get the first job so usually there are two steps uh, in the development like if from being a complete beginner to actually being a professional software developer guys uh, the first step for anyone who wants to become a software developer is to get a first job that is the tr trickiest part because it's actually very difficult for some, not for everybody, but for some people it's uh, difficult to become a software developer because it's uh, not super straightforward exactly what you need to know in order to become a software developer. It's not like you can just go to school and then be guaranteed that you're gonna have a job and stuff like that. Uh, and then once you get over that hurdle, the first one, now you have the second hurdle, hurdle, which is that you now have a shot at becoming a mid-level software developer, which is where you want to be. Because a mid-level software developer is the sweet spot, usually, uh, for being a pro, like a software developer ex uh, professional. Uh, you don't have to become like a super senior software developer to be in the safe zone, but the mid-level is the bare minimum. Because the difference between a junior level software developer and a mid-level is that a mid-level has c reached the second point, which is that that person now feels comfortable working with professional grade software code bases, like production level code bases. There is a big difference between that and what you have been facing in for the most part depending on it's a little bit depending on the project as well because there are of course small projects quote unquote in the industry as well that are in a, in a sense very similar at the very least to what you find in tutorial code but the average is that there is more code more like issues and legacy and on like on like uncomprehensible code and stuff like that and of course more abstractions and more complexity everything there's just more of everything more problems uh, more code all that good stuff right and that is the second part which you as a new software developer you you have to learn how to master this if you cannot master this part because this is where it, now now you're in the major majors this is where it's actually time to prove that you have what it takes to be a software developer. Everything up to until this point is just preparation. Everything else is like nothing in comparison uh, to this part. Uh, and if you can learn how to handle the, well, usually this first few years is going to be very overwhelming for the average software developer, depending on, of course, the project and so forth and so forth. And this is why I mentioned to people that it is a very good investment for you to make sure that you know your basics, your like your fundamental core skills. It is a very good investment to try to find a, a place of work where you're not working completely alone, where you have somebody to ask for help and stuff like that, and so forth and so forth. And the reason why I'm telling you this, guys, is not because it's like there's no nothing to it. It is because I've done this journey myself. I train people on a daily basis in the exact same thing. I have juniors, seniors, mid-levels, etc., etc. in my team and in other teams that I've been part of as well. I've worked with practically at this point every profile there is within software development. And I can tell you that the red thread is always, if you want to go from a beginner up to a master level. You need to learn how to deal with all of the complexities and all the like office politics and like that's higher level of course but uh, like uh, the domains and all the different ways because there are so many compositions of systems you think that it's just complete you might just think that it's all about code it's not just about code it's about people it's about systems and processes and all this other stuff that reflects what the system reflects all of that complexity right and 
dealing with that as a junior software developer is for most of them very intimidating. I know it was for me, it was super scary. And that's why it's so useful for you to sort of, it's almost like preparing, I would say. It's like, what I'm telling you is that there is a storm coming. It's a pretty severe storm and it's gonna be around for a little while. You're gonna feel kinda out of your depth and you're in this boat, right? And you're going to be swinging front back and forth on the ocean for a few years until you learn how to sail well enough so that you make it out of the storm and you don't really feel like and then it's kind of, well, depending on how solid you are, it's going to be fairly smooth sailing from that point. When you get to that point where you can maneuver within the, all that chaos and all that code, that's when you've reached the... Uh, the minimum requirements for you to call yourself, in my opinion, at the very least, a professional grade software developer. And a like a tutorial is just an example of what that could look like. It's just a toy type of thing, right? Another analogy would be that it's like the things that you see in the tutorial, guys, that's like you looking at the video showing like a model using some type of like fitness tool or something, smiling with perfect teeth and everything. So, like, they don't even sweat, right? That's what the tutorial is. The production code is you actually working your ass off on that thing and building up a real sweat. The fitter you are, the more like the model you're going to be. But in the beginning, you're going to be just gasping for air, trying to like just make it through, right? Making through the workout. And that's where it comes in. It's very handy to have people around you to kind of show you the way, show you tips, tricks, uh, explain things, and above all else, uh, try to, at the very least, give you some comfort in in this process. And I, I just want you to understand that, guys. It's uh, it's It sounds bad, maybe, but it, it really isn't. It's really, not, it's really not, because at the end of the day, it's really just about you growing and understanding that there are some, there's going to be some struggles. And I hope that that's fairly clear to everybody who wants to be a software developer. That's not just going to be an easy process, but you can do it. That much I can promise you. And that's why you, that's why I say the things that I say. And like why I sit here just to make you understand the things that you should be prepared to face. And when you, because w the beautiful part about this is that. Uh, when you dive in first, it feels very overwhelming and like there's a lot of code and so forth. But the more you tinker with really complicated problems or like problems that are more complex than the tutorials, the better you will get at it. And that's the thing I want you to understand. It's the same thing with the storm. If you are prepared for a storm, like there's one going out outside on uh, yeah, outside, outside my apartment. You're, I mean, inside. I don't care. It can like, you know, it can rain as much as it want because I'm prepared for the storm, and I want you to be this, in the same sort of mindset where you realize that all right, there's going to be some shit coming my way. That's okay. I'm ready for it, and I understand it, and I'm going to make it through it. And so that's why I tell people: try to tinker with real problems and try to as quickly as possible get to a point where you're writing production level software because. The tutorials, guys, these are just contrived, like like almost, they are trying to simulate the real problem, but they will never, ever reach the same level of complexity as doing the actual thing. You will never learn professional-grade software development from just watching tutorials. I can promise you that much. So what I want you to take away from this is that, yes, tutorial code is very different from production code because it's simpler. It's more straightforward. It's as, as, it's as I said, it's like watching a model demo how to use, say, a fitness, to, a fitness machine or something like that. And production code is doing the actual work. And you realize that, oh, shit, they made it look so easy. It's not that easy. It's a lot harder and so forth. But it's not something that is beyond you guys. Guys, I work with people every day who have everything from like tons of years of experience to people who are like literally fresh out of school and they all manage to learn how to deal with the production level so code base it's really down to time and investment and that's why i tell people that the best tip i can give you is to get from the tutorial
tutorial state as quickly as possible. Learn what you need so you kind of know what you're doing and then start tinkering, start to try to build real things because it's sort of like you're learning how to read. Sure, you can learn the alphabet and read it a hundred times, but if you don't practice the actual reading, it's not going to make you all that much better. Think about it that way. That's uh, uh, at least what I did. Um, and most of the most successful developers that I know do the same things. They tinker with things rather than just learning theory. Have a great day.